I'm never drinking again. I've decided I'm going to take the pledge. <sighs> Hello, good evening and welcome, or good morning, good afternoon, whichever the time is, uh, your end while you're watching this. But uh, yeah, I'm not very uh, fit today. Yesterday, I started off very windy, extremely windy, you'll have to forgive that, very, very windy here in the northwest UK but yesterday I um, I did a bit of a gardening job at somebody's place over in Widnes and um, he was saying that there's you know the, the where the clothes uh, post where the clothes line goes he said uh, I can't get that out I said I'll oh, give us give us a spade like you know and I was digging down and I dug down what must have been three and a half feet there were bricks, it was all concrete and brick basically, and about two feet wide and about three and a half feet deep. That post was going nowhere. But uh, I don't, uh, I don't, I never say never, I never say no. And uh, like a fool, I did dig it out, and my back's killing me now. So it'll be alright, I've not bust my back, it's just, it's just aching. Because there was some bloody weight in that, I'll tell you. Um, I bet it was heavier than me, that. I bet it was, actually. I bet it was about 250 pounds in weight. Something like that. A, bit, a big, awkward block of concrete and brick. Anyway, we got it out. And um, so, yeah, I'm not doing any really hard stuff today, hard physical stuff today. What, what we will be doing is getting the peppers in. We're going to be getting the potatoes out from the, uh, from the um, greenhouse that are in the bed in the greenhouse they're coming out and we're going to be getting peppers and um, uh, cucumbers in so that's what we're going to be doing today they've got to come out the, the potatoes I don't think they're quite ready but we'll have a look they're not keeling over yet but there's plenty of growth on them um, we'll see what we get they've got to come out anyway so we'll do a potato reveal eh? see what we get I'll get my scissors and chop them back and then uh, we'll get the fork to them all right, see you in a bit. I forgot to tell you. I also compounded my woes and physical demise at the, uh, the Anchor's Arms. It's got a silent W. Uh, with, a, with a few good friends of mine last night, a few of my old buddies. Uh, we do the Friday night virtual pub, as you know. And uh, as I say, last night it was uh, from about 8 o'clock or about 20 past 8, I think, we started. And we only finished it just before one o'clock in the morning. So it was a good four hour session. Yeah, five hour session. Uh, which meant that I only got down to the plots today at about 12 o'clock. I was, I was sobering up for a couple of hours this morning to make sure I was okay to drive. Anyway, anyway, we're all right now, but uh, don't drink the brown pop, boys and girls. It's not good for you. See you in a bit. Right, so uh, this is our next guest, and this, this is the Malba, or Melba melon. That's going to be going into the greenhouse, uh, on the same side that the titty melon's on. And uh, we've got four, four other clients. Um, the cucumber, the three corner de, corno de toro rosso, uh, long red horn peppers as well they're going to be going in now if we've got space later down the line because the melon will sort of bush out in the same way that the uh, the milk melon will the titty melon will it's probably going to take up the whole side I'll show you that's Rocky's Rocky's missus his titty melon that she's grown from seed at least that's what we hope it is that's what it said on the uh, on the label but uh, they look like courgettes so we might, we might have been fooled, or she might have been fooled. Because they do look like courgettes to me, though. So they're very similar, at least, to courgettes. But we'll see how we get on with them. Now, I've already dug up a plant there. Well, two plants there. And that's all we've got off them. But they've got to come out, like I say. So we'll do a, we'll do a potato reveal. I'll chop them back and we'll dig them out. Hi there. So let's see what we can see. Um, I'll just get underneath there with the scissors and get rid of the top foliage just pull those out we're not open for much to be honest with it we're not expecting much there's a horse's tail there mer's tail 
But they've got to come out, as I say, anyway, so we might as well see, see what we've got, eh? See if we've got anything worth having. I, I forgot all about these last year, and they just came up, um, unexpectedly, really. These were supposed to be the Christmas potatoes, but... Uh, we only got one plant that actually came up last year, but they've, they've come through this year, they've grown this year. Um, so they've only been in a couple of, well, I suppose the, the growth came on them about two and a half months ago, so you never know, we might get something out of them, see if we can get anything out of them. Let's see if we've got anything on them. Not much, not looking too clever, is it? Too spectacular. All in live real time, boys and girls, obviously. Be sure there's no camera trickery and fakery going on. But yeah, we've not got much in there, have we, boys and girls? Lots of top growth and stuff, but not much spud. Not much in the way of spud, is there? We've got a couple off them. A couple in there. I say ideally you'd probably want to leave these for another month or something like that. Put your worms in. Lots of worm action going on. Not much spud action. Riveting TV, I bet this and if I lots of little baby jobbies, little baby ones. We'll get all that out anyway. It needs to come out anyway, as I say. So, um, because the peppers are not going to be uh, able to stay in those pots for any, any more time, to be fair. Give them a bit of a fork through just to make sure I've not missed any. It's a nice loam, that, though, isn't it? Good bit of soil, that. I'm going to put a, uh, a little bit more uh, blood fish and bone in it just to uh, invigorate it a little bit but we'll be uh, we'll be liquid feeding anyway in here right okay so i'll level that off now ready for the peppers all right so it's the the cut off pot into the um, we've made a mould, as we always do, with the actual plant itself. The pot is in there, still in its pot. The plant is still in its pot. That's in there, and we've just earthed up around that inside the uh, the, uh, the bottomless bucket. This will then come out like that. Flip it over. Give it a bit of a squeeze and a tease. Now, there's not much root growth on there, so uh, let's keep our fingers crossed for it. I'm not going to give it um, a water, and I don't think that the water, the soil is relatively damp. So let's hope that uh, that the plant will uh, will sort itself out and get its roots going, get its own roots going off now in there. That was a, a again another present from Rocky's missus, the Melba melon. So let's hope that that recovers in here. As I say the soil's damp, so I'm going to let it sort of spread its wings there. No feed as such. A tiny sprinkling of just bone meal I've put in there, and uh, not I've not put the blood fishing bone in there. When it comes time for the watering, which will probably be on Sunday, I'm going to water using these. All right, so I'm just going to put some uh, five millimeter holes in our water uppers. 
apologies if you have seen this a hundred times on the channel, but it's uh, it's for those guys who are new to the channel and haven't seen it before. So forgive me for that, but that's this is essentially what we do when we're putting in the subterranean watering system. That's a two litre popped bottle, keeping your fingers totally out of the way. One. Two. Three. Four around the neck. And then a couple of inches up. You see that depression you get you've got there. Into there. Again with four. And then we move up another couple of inches. See what I'm doing with hand there? Yeah, that's so you don't drill into your hand. Because you, you it wouldn't you wouldn't tickle that if you did that. It would not tickle that. One, two, three, one more. And then with these holes that we've dug, we just gotta make sure that they're deep enough for the holes in the um in the bottle to be submerged under the soil like that. Okay. So we're gonna do that with uh, with this one as well. So we'll have uh, we'll have two by the side of the plant here. Don't wanna bore you, do I? Boring enough, Anna. So final step is once they're in the ground, and the holes are below ground level. You can uh, you can pop a couple of these, in. and all these are just uh, round three and a half inch pots. And they fit nicely, perfectly, really, into there. And uh, as I say, the, the soil is very damp at the moment, so that's the wind again. So I'm not going to water that up, but you get the picture. You just pour in the water, you take your rolls off your watering can, pour the water into there till it hits the bottom of that. You start, you start seeing it through that. And then you know it's all being soaked, into, injected really into the soil, and it will spread out. Now the roots from that then will go down and seek it out. So you don't water in there, you just water in these. The roots from that, hopefully, it will trigger that root response. So it'll have to seek out the moisture. That um, that plant had too much, um, it was spoiled with water and uh, not enough vermiculite in it. Uh, so that's, that's what it needs. It needs to have a loose soil not too wet, slightly damp, and then the roots will then seek out that water. They'll seek out the uh, the liquid, which of course will be under the ground and around here. So it's got to go down through through the bucket. It's got to go beyond that, and then have a root. Literally have a root about to find the water. When you feed uh, with a liquid feed, you would then feed inside the bucket. So you pour it inside the bucket for the feed. But that's only every sort of 10 to 20, 10 to uh, 14 days, really, that you'd do that. And we're going to be feeding it with comfrey, because we've got a, we've got some comfrey, liquid comfrey feed. That's what we're going to be using. And we'll show you that when it comes through. Yeah, kids. Look at this little critter. Little woodlouse. Creepy crawly, creepy crawly, where's he gone? He's falling off. Right, okay, see you in a bit. Hello, back again. So, uh, this is our cucumber, <laughs> and it's an F1, which means it's kind of like a hermaphrodite in so much as it can actually fertilize itself. You get the male and the female flowers on it, and uh, it's a self fertilizer basically in the same way that we think, well it is actually that Rocky's uh, uh, titty melon or whatever it is, that's doing the same thing to be fair. Um, so that's going to go into there, same way as before.
Okay, now those are marigolds, and uh, one thing that green fly, black fly, white fly, all the little pesty flies don't like is the smell, the pheromone sort of emission of the uh, of the marigold. Now they will hopefully deter those pests as we put them into the stations. There you get um, you can get thirty. Um, 30 plug plants there for five pounds it's a waste of time trying to grow them at that price you just might as well spend a fiver and there you've got 30 so I've put 10 in this side which I don't kick the bucket I've put 10 um, around or in front of those um, those peppers there's your tuke got two peppers in there the corner de Toro Rosso and on the end there we've got two Apache hot peppers on the end and uh, so hopefully, yeah, what that'll do, it worked last year, is it kept the green fly, the black fly, and the white fly off them sufficiently so that um, we weren't plagued with it. So I'm going to get those in the ground now, and then the final step will be putting on the, uh, the sheep's wool, putting the sheep's wool around it, sheep's wool pellets. Okay, so uh, the sheep's wool pellets form a sort of a mat. Um, those are the same pellets I used last year in here for the, over, the overwintering greens winter greens that we had in here and they worked like a charm there wasn't one single incident of um, slug damage to any of those plants that were in here not one single iota of it so we're hoping that does the same this year with the uh, with the peppers and the melon well, that's a gourd actually and uh, the melba melon so uh, yeah we've got the marigolds in the what it does the sheep's wool is it irritates the foot pad of the slug really irritates it and it hates it and the feelers when it feel the feelers get scratched by the wool it can't stand it the slug and, it, and away it goes also um, when it turns into the mat it helps to retain water below soil level and it keeps it dry above soil level um, yeah so it's quite expensive it's about a fiber for a bag and there's a bag's worth gone in here so a fibre for the marigolds and a fibre for the slug pellets. But uh, it's down to you, isn't it, if you want to have a go at it. I like it. Works. I'm going to go and get something to eat. I'm uh, feeling a bit the worse for wear. We'll have them tomorrow with our Sunday lunch. So, uh, yeah, spuds out. Melons and peppers in. Marigolds in. Cucumber in, chilli peppers in, and away we go, back to the ranch. Okay, I'll see you next time. Uh, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. This has been Tony, a.k.a. Guru Mafinda, and I'm signing out. And remember, keep growing with your head down, and we love you all. Saturday night tonight, don't get drunk. I'm signing the pledge. I'm, I've had enough of the drink. Well, it's had enough of me, one of the two was tated last night absolutely tated so uh yeah all right i'm a saintly and a born again guru today and you know in agony my back's knackered my head's pounding and i'm not very well but i'm still smiling keep smiling through just like you always do shed wars are coming We've been challenged to a shed war by a colonial. See you in a bit. Bye-bye, folks.